A uh, few months ago, I remember Pastor Finn preaching a word that is at least similar to mine. He copied mine. So I know that. Uh, right, Pastor Finn? Uh, but, and, and I was trying to make some writings because English is my first language, you know, and, and it's easy for me, so I make some notes just to have an idea. But, um, and then I realized, I said, I've heard this message before. And I said, no, I'm not going to preach this. It was burning in my heart. I'm not going to preach this. And yesterday or today I was coming from Boston, one o'clock in the morning, and I was praying, saying, Lord, give me a word. It's your church. And I went to bed uh, a little bit concerned. But this morning I woke up and this word was burning in my heart. So I understood from the Lord that he wants to talk a little bit with us. Uh, not that he's, he hasn't been, but sometimes he uses different personalities, different people to speak in different ways with us. And of course we have been fed here every Sunday, every Thursday. Uh, Every time we are here and, and we are being, we have been fed by the word of the Lord. And I praise the Lord for the different uh, personalities that we have. Uh, and I, I don't want to apologize, but I want to say that because my vocabulary is a little bit short in English, maybe it's going to be a little bit hard, but don't take it as an offense or offensive. And, and I don't mean that. I'm going to be offensive, but sometimes I feel that maybe my words could be a little bit more polite, but I can't find in my vocabulary. So uh, it's a, a good excuse for a Brazilian man preaching, right? So <laughs> I can use that sometimes. Uh, but I, I want you to open your Bible with me in the Gospel of John. First chapter. Gospel of John, first chapter. Verse 14. John, Gospel of John, chapter 14, the, chapter 1, verse 14. I'm sorry. It says, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory. The glory as of the only begotten son or begotten of the father. Full of grace and truth. Amen. Amen. The gospel of John begins saying... In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him, and without Him nothing was made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of man. In the beginning, this is the word used in the very first verse of the Bible, to declare the beginning, the start of everything. The expression in Hebrew, Bereshit, which means beginning. John is stating here that Jesus is since the beginning. He was with the Father, with God. And he himself was God. He also shows that everything was made by him and through him, through the word, including the life. However, in verse 14, which is the basis of our meditation this morning, John will say that the word became flesh and dwelt among us. 
Yes, the only begotten Son of God, the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. The Apostle Paul will speak further to the letters or in the letter to the Philippians in chapter 2 or on chapter 2 verses 5 to 11 he will say let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus who being in the form of God did not consider it robbery to be equal with God but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bond servant and coming in the likeness of men. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Therefore, God also has highly exalted him and given him the name, not a name, the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of those in heaven and of those on earth and of those under the earth and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. He humbled himself. The Word became flesh. He took the form of a man. Later he humbled himself again. When being found in appearance of a man, he became obedient to the point of death. Even the death of a cross. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ took the form of a man. Obeyed the Father. Died on the cross for our sins and iniquities. But at the third day, he resurrected from the dead. So we could have life. Glory be to his name. We have sang today, praise the Father, praise the Son. My soul magnifies the Lord because he has done great things. I just want to call your attention for the fact that he came. You can say, Pastor, we know that. We know Jesus came. This is a Christian church, Pastor Adelson. And we wouldn't be here if we didn't believe he came. Yes, I know and I agree. I don't pretend to say anything that you don't know already. I know that you know everything I'm going to say. I just want to remind something for us this morning. It is very important that we understand and that we be uh, aware and we know that he came. But the verse 14 we will say that the word became flesh, dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory. The glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. I want to speak today not about the fact that he came and suffered and died on the cross. This we know. But I want to speak on how he came. This verse is saying that he came and we beheld the glory. Or we beheld his glory. Jesus came in glory. Jesus came, John writes that he came and he displayed the glory of God. Jesus is the expression of God's glory. In the Old Testament, people couldn't see the glory of God. They were not allowed to see 
Moses asked God to reveal his glory to him. He says, Lord, God, show me your glory. In Exodus 33, 22, God told him, So it shall be, while my glory passes by, that I will put you in the cleft of the rock and will cover you with my hand while I pass by. And then he will say, after I pass, I'll take my hand and you will see my back. In the Old Testament, we couldn't. But the writer of Hebrews will say in chapter 1, verses 1 to 4, God, who at various times and in various ways is spoke in time past to the fathers by the prophets, has in these last days is spoken to us by his Son, whom he has appointed heir of all things, through whom also he made the world, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become so much better than the angels, as he has by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. Jesus came in the full expression of God's glory. In the past, they heard about God through the prophets. Now we have the opportunity to see the glory of God through Jesus Christ. Through Jesus Christ, we have the glory of God. We are part of the glory of God. When we get together as church, the glory of God is manifested in our midst. Yes. Through Him, we can also be expression of God's glory. Jesus said, you are the light of the world. You are the light. Let your, shine, let your light shine. You are expression of the glory of God. You are expression of the glory of God. If you didn't know that, you should take this today and go out shining the glory of God. You are the light. We were ca called to be light. We were ca called to shine in the darkness. Shine then. We were called for that. We complain. We live in a difficult world. I hear people saying, oh, the criminality or the crime is raising up in Fall River. Oh, we are living this, we are living that. Where are you? Where is the church? We should be shining. We should be, we should be reaching out to the people outside. I told Pastor Ron once, or I told someone once, and I usually say in the Portuguese church or congregation, we should put a plate on the door by the inside. When you go out, it's a welcome to the mission field. Going outside of the church. The outside, out of those doors, is our mission field. Here we come to be fed. Here we come to receive the word. And we go out to shine the light of God's glory. Let's move forward. Jesus came full of grace. This is one of the most beautiful and comforting doctrines of the Bible. Every Christian should know better about God's grace. We really should know better about grace. 
It doesn't fit well in our short and limited minds. Why? We, we look for justice, especially for the neighbor. For ourselves, mercy, but for the other, justice. Jesus came and he presented another kind of justice, his justice. When he died on the cross, Jesus paid our debt. He took your problem. He took your sins. He took your iniqui iniquities. He took our dirty lives, our dirty habits. He took our diseases. He took our darknesses. He took our shortcomings. He took our failures. He took our inabilities, our rejections, our sorrows, sorrows, our griefs, our afflictions. He took our wounds. He took our weaknesses and all the trash you can imagine. He took on the cross. The chastisement of our peace. This is what Isaiah says, was upon him. And by his stripes we were healed. The Lord laid on him the iniquity of us all. All of our iniquities laid upon him. The Apostle Paul writes in his letter to the Ephesians on chapter 2, verses 8 and 9. For by grace. You have been saved through faith. And that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. It's not about our good works. It's not about even our good behavior. It doesn't save. And I'm not saying for you to have a bad behavior. Although some of us have, right? It's about what Jesus has done on the cross for us. It's about the Word becoming flesh. It's about the Word taking our places on the cross. He came full of glory. But he came full of grace. But he, oh, what an amazing grace. One of these days I was talking to someone outside. I think it was the dismissal of the school. And someone, I stopped to talk to someone. And this person told me, Pastor, I understand. I'm almost in. But when I remember my past. And I said, brother, if I would take into consideration my past, I would never step on that altar. I would never consider being here. But by the grace of God, by the grace of God, He has forgiven my sins. He forgave my sins. He gave me a new life. I was talking to a church last night and I told them, Jesus didn't come to reform you. Jesus didn't come to fix you. He came to kill the old creature and make a new creature. You are new creation. We are new creation. All things, old things have passed and all things have, made, have been made new. We are new Christians or new creatures in Christ. For there is one God and one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. The Word became flesh and He became flesh to come and be the mediator of a new covenant. Now we have access to the Father because of His grace. Because of the grace, there is no other. 
because he paid the price. He has the only name by which we must be saved. Peter preaching in Acts 4 verse 12, 12 he says, nor is there salvation in any other. For there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. It's only by Jesus Christ. It's only through Jesus Christ. John 1.14, again, the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and full of truth. We love the grace. We love the glory. And I hope we love the truth. We have been living in a very uh, difficult time. The super grace, the hyper grace has killed so many Christians. When the Apostle Paul writes to the Romans on chapter 5 he comes speaking about justification the end of the chapter he will say that where there is much sin there is much more grace if you can follow with me, because I know it well in Portuguese. He says, so that as sin reigned in death, even so grace might reign through righteousness to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And maybe someone had, maybe someone had said, so, we sin more, we receive more grace. And Paul starts chapter 6. I see the Apostle Paul may be not angry, but a little bit Brazilian. Saying, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Certainly not. How shall who died to sin live any longer in it? Grace is the power. Grace is the ability that God gives us to overcome the sin. Jesus came full of truth. Jesus came in glory, in grace, and truth. And there is no grace without truth. In the same way that Jesus proclaimed salvation, he also proclaimed condemnation. It's hard. Jesus came full of truth. Yes, he healed the sick. Yes, he delivered the demon-possessed. Yes, he fed the people. Yes, he showed love and he still does. And for those who accepted his preaching and later his sacrifice, he offered salvation. However, we cannot forget that he came proclaim truth of salvation and he came proclaim truth of condemnation. Jesus spoke about heaven, but he also spoke about hell. He always
showed his love and preached about the kingdom of heaven. However, he spoke so many times about those who refused to accept. Matthew chapter 7, on verses 15, 16, he will say about knowing the man or knowing the tree by its fruits. On verse 21, he starts one of the most horrible, let's put this way, I don't know if it's right, the right word, declarations of the Bible. He speaks about the man or the people that hears his voice and decide to obey and not to obey. And he will compare those who do not obey with a person, with a man that builds his house on the sand. And when the rain comes, when the rivers flood, when the storm comes, the house falls. And he's speaking about those who hear his voice. And then he will say, there is another class of people that hears my voice. And for those that hear my voice and obey my commandments, I compare the, them to a man who built his house on the rock. Jesus never, never hid the truth. He always, always told the truth. One of the most dark point of this passage is when he says, many will say, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? Have we not cast out demons in your name? Have we not done many wonders in your name? And then I will declare to them, says the Lord, I never knew you. It's not that he, I, I, I knew you, but you know, there's so much time that we don't talk. No, he didn't say that. He said, I never knew you. You know what's the tragedy? It's people being in the church and not knowing the truth. Living the life the way they want out there. And on Sunday come to church and think things are going to be well. Let me tell you, God called us to be faithful every time. From the moment we accepted him as Savior and Lord of our lives, we have to obey him. It's a very hard word, right? It's clear. And I could show many things that Jesus said about this. Of those who have external appearance, but are far from his truth. I remember the last chapel of this year was the first Wednesday. I preached on Mark 11 when Jesus saw a fig tree. And he cursed the tree because there was no fruit in it. And then we went, he went to the temple. And in the temple he found people doing businesses. Exchanging in the temple. And he rebuked them. He beat them up. He kicked their tables. He turned their tables. Some people, and pay attention, they were in the church. They were in the temple. But their hearts, their hearts was not right. 
Their hearts were not right. Their motivations were different. What I want you to understand today is that this message is not so pleasant to hear. It's Christmas time. Jesus came. But I will tell you, this is the true message. This is the true message of the gospel. And some people only see Jesus as the one who gives. And we have learned here that we are a family. Jesus came to reveal his glory. Jesus came to reveal his grace. Jesus came also to reveal that he is the truth. And let me tell you, the truth hasn't changed. The truth remains the same yesterday, today, and forever the truth will be. We can pat ourselves and say, what am I doing wrong? Ask God. I have been praying and saying, God, correct myself. God, correct myself. God, show me the truth in your word. God, help me to be one of your representatives here. Lord, help me to be a real Christian. And I'm not saying that we are holy, 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 holy Christians flying on the streets. No. We are full of problems. Full of uh, fabric defects right from the the birth but we are redeemed in Jesus Christ Jesus Christ has cleansed us and he said you are clean already you have been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you let me tell you one thing one day, because Jesus came in grace, in glory, and in truth, all of us and all the world will be judged. There will be a judgment. There will be a judgment. Life doesn't end here. Judgment will happen. It is real. Heaven is real, and everyone wants to go to heaven. I see a, a film, a movie star dying, and people writing, Oh, heaven just won. I see a music singer, those, those music, you know, that speaks about all good things dying. Oh, we have, we have music in heaven today. we got to rip our Bibles. I'm sorry, I'm not judging people. I'm just saying that by the fruit, we know. And let me tell you, there is no place in heaven for sin. Jesus said that in heaven, he will receive his bride. Is that right? And he speaks, if you want, I'm not go longer, going to go longer. But you in your house, read uh, Revelation 19. He says that his bride has a white, clear dress. No spots. You imagine a marriage here today? The fiancé is here or the bridegroom is here waiting for the groom. And she comes with all dirt. What would you say? Is this girl crazy? It's her marriage. No one see. Her dress is dirty. But we, as church, we should do the same. 1 Corinthians 11, 26. It's the text that we use for communion. 1 Corinthians 11, 26. Just go there with me. I just came to my mind and I want to share with you. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, 
you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. I will tell you one thing. Jesus will come back. Jesus will come back one day. And we, we ought to be prepared. And we are not here saying, oh, Jesus is coming tomorrow. Just give up everything. And no, no. Prepare your life every day because he can come for you today. And he can come for me today. But when he comes for all, we all ought to be prepared. How have we been living? He asks that. He asks that. How have you prepared your life? It's a preparation. And I'm not saying this because I want you to shrink in your bench, in your seat. Oh, and now. No, no, we are not going to shrink. We are not going to shut our mouths. We are not going to stop saying. We are not stop to proclaim. We are not going to stop to adore, to worship. We are preparing our lives to meet Jesus. And he came in truth to show us that we can. We can in his grace. We can by his grace and by faith. We are not going to give up. We want to take our responsibilities. And by the power of the Holy Spirit. Because God said, not by power, not by might, but by my spirit. We ought to seek the presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives. We ought to seek the presence of the Holy Spirit in the church. We ought to seek his presence in our lives every minute. Don't live one minute without his presence. Pursue peace with all people. And holiness. Holiness. Without which no one will see the Lord. Jesus didn't come just for us to have a birthday party on the December 25th. He came to give us life. Abundant life. He came to save. And he will come again. And those who are prepared will meet him. We will meet him one day. And praise the Lord. I'm going to be there. Oh, hallelujah. I will be there that day. And I know you will be there too. Jesus gave us power over the sin. Jesus gave us power over the world. He gives us the Holy Spirit. Let us walk in power. Let us walk in victory. The truth didn't change, I said. The truth remains the same. And if we, we want, and if we are willing to seek his presence, oh, he will show up as he is here today. And he can change all things that are old. And make all things new in your life. And this is exactly why he came. And this is exactly what he came to do in our lives. And everyone's life that receives and accepts him as Lord and Savior. God bless you. Let us pray. Lord, thank you for today. Thank you for this word. Thank you, Lord, because you came in glory. You came in grace, and you came also in truth. We praise you and we thank you, Lord, for this season that we remember your birth. But it's very good to remember what you came to do. You came to show us the truth, to show us the way. And you are the way, and you are the truth. And we want just to praise you, Lord. Help us to walk in the truth. Help us to walk, Lord, showing your glory, showing your truth, and being witnesses of you. Lord, once again, visit those that need a healing today. Oh, Lord, even those that are watching far from here, even those that cannot even move in their, in their beds, I pray, Lord, in Jesus' name, for your healing touch right now. In Jesus' name, I pray, Lord. You told us if we agree here, you would 
the green heaven. Lord, raise up those that are in bed right now. Visit, Lord, uh, Doris, Lord. Visit her, Pastor Ron's mom, in Jesus' name, and touch her life. Lord, others now, Deborah, others now that need a miracle, touch their lives. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. Please stand.